Hi there and thanks for joining me. In this video we are going to look at linear sequences. We're going to look at how to work out an expression for a sequence and also how to discover the nth number. If this is the kind of video that's of use to you please do subscribe and uh, let's go. Let's start then with some definitions. So what exactly is a linear sequence? Well, it is quite simply a series or sequence of numbers where the difference in between each number remains the same. So in this one, the difference is two. Another one might be three, six, nine, 12, 15. So here we have a sequence where the gap in between each number is three. Within a sequence, each number is regarded as a term. So in this particular sequence here, then the number three would be the first term in the sequence. And number six is the second and the third and so on. When you are given a sequence in an exam, then the first number that you are given is always the first term. So for instance, if you were given the term that actually started with 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on, then in this case, the number 6 is the first term in your sequence. Now, every sequence has its own rule or formula to describe how it works. And in order to create this rule, the first thing we do is simply look at the gap between them. So again, going back to this first sequence here, we have a gap of 2. Therefore, this sequence here is known as 2n. We always use the letter n when we are describing linear sequences. This second year is the page here is going up in threes. Therefore, this would be 3n. So similarly, if you had the term 4, 8, 12, 16 and so on, this one would be 4n. We use the pattern or formula for a sequence in order to be able to find any number within that sequence. So for instance, here's the basic sequence again of 2n, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now I have given you the first one, two, three, four, five, the first six terms in this sequence. But you may be asked, for instance, to find the 30th term. Now you could simply continue this 12, 14, 16, 18, until you've got 30 numbers, but that takes some time. A simpler way is to simply use the rule for this sequence. The rule 2n can be used to find the 30th term simply by substituting the number 30 for the n. So that becomes 2 times 30. So the 30th term in this sequence would be 60. Let's just have another example of that. Here is the sequence 3n. The gap is 3, 3, 6, 9. We have the first five numbers in the sequence, but this time we are being asked to find the 25th term. So again, all we do is use the rule for this sequence. It's 3n, so 3 times put the number you are looking for into the term. So in this case, the 25th term in this sequence, 3 times 25, is 75. There is, however, a further step that we need to take in order to be able to create a rule or a formula for any sequence. Here we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, the sequence we've just used a moment ago. We know the gaps are going up in threes, so the formula is 3n. However, Below that is another sequence, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. Now the gap in this sequence is also 3n. But of course the two sequences can't have the same rule because quite clearly they have different numbers. So here's how we find the rule for the second pattern. The first thing we do exactly same as we did with the first pattern. We look at the gap between each number. It is 3. Therefore, we can confidently write 3n. However, what we now have to do 
is to take a step backwards. You remember at the beginning I said that this number four was the first term, and the seven was the second term, and so on. We have to figure out what the term before the first term would be. In other words, if we took this sequence back a step, what would the number before 4 be? And of course, we do that by using the same gap. There is a gap of 3 between each number, so we go back 3 and we land on the number 1. In this case, it is simply the number 1, the positive number 1. Therefore, on the end of the 3n, we write 3n plus 1. And that is the term, that is the formula for this particular sequence. If you think about it, it makes sense because if this is 3n, the second has to be 3n because the gaps are the same. But in the second sequence, each number is plus 1 from the top sequence. Therefore, 3n plus 1. Let's have a look at another example. Here we have a sequence 2, 6, 10, 14, 18. Don't forget, 2 is your first term, second term, third term, and so on. So we need to create the rule for this sequence. The first thing we do again is we look at the gap between the numbers. In this case, the space is 4. They're going up in 4s. So we start this particular sequence, this particular rule, with 4n. We now need to know whether there's anything else on the end of this sequence, and we do so by going back another 4. Now, if we go back another 4, the number we land on here is minus 2. And that is exactly what we put on the end of this rule, minus 2. So the pattern or rule for this sequence is 4n minus 2. Another sequence. This time, the numbers are going down from one term to the next. So let's create a rule for this particular sequence. Well, again, the gap is 5, but actually, as we are going along the sequence, we are going down 5, so the gap is minus 5. Therefore, we start the sequence with minus 5n. We then want to find out what is on the end of this particular rule, so we go back another 5. That would mean going up 5 in this direction, so the number we land on is 40. It's a positive number, therefore on the end we write plus 40. So the rule for this particular sequence is minus 5n plus 40. Now if you're going to write this, it's okay, but actually in maths we don't like starting something with a minus. So we would generally turn that round and we would say 40 minus 5n. Let's have a look at how this would work if you were asked to find a particular term in this sequence. Let's say you were looking for the 20th term. So we do exactly the same as we did earlier. We start with 40 minus, now 20 substitutes for the n, so we have 5 times 20. Don't forget your bid mass, that is 40 minus 100. Therefore, the answer is minus 60. So, in fact, the 20th term in this series would be minus 60. I want to have a look now at a very common question you find in an exam, but I also want to look at little hints and tips as to how you could make life easier for yourself. Here's the question you might get. There is a sequence 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. And you might get a question something like, is the number, and you'll be offered a random number, so let's use 148. A term, so in other words, does it fit in this sequence? So the question they're asking is, if you continue this sequence long enough, would you hit on the number 148? Would it be in there? Now, of course, you could, again, keep on writing numbers until you get up to 148 to find out. But there is a better way of doing it. 
the first thing you need to do is write down the rule for this particular sequence. So let's do that. We have a gap of 3. This sequence starts 3n. We're then going to look for what would have been the previous number. We're going to go back 3 and we land on the number 2, the plus 2. So this particular term is 3n plus 2. Now to find out whether 148 would actually appear in this sequence, we turn it into a little equation. We say, OK, if number 148 is in the sequence, then 3n plus 2 would actually equal 148 at that point. And we work this out as an equation. And the simple rule is, if we end up with a full number, a whole number, an integer, then the answer would be yes. If we end up with a decimal number, the answer is no. So let's move this round. 3n equals 148 minus 2. So 3n equals 146. Therefore, n equals 146 divided by 3. Now, in this case, our answer is 48.66 recurring. It is not an integer. It is not a whole number. Therefore, your answer would be no. 146 does not appear in this sequence. Let's make a slight change to the question. Let's assume we are being asked whether the number 149 is a term in this sequence. So again, in this case, we would write 3n plus 2 equals 149. Therefore, 3n equals 149 minus 2. 3n is therefore 147. So n is equal to 147 over 3. In this case, our answer is 49. So yes, 149 does appear in this sequence. And in fact, it's actually the 49th term in the sequence. I did say, though, that I wanted to give you a bit of a hint or tip on how you might save yourself time in an exam. Let's take a look at this question. We are given the numbers 1, 9, 17, 25, 33. And part A of the question says, find the expression, find the rule. So let's do that first. We look here and we see that the gap is 8. So we know it's going to start with 8n. We then have to go back 8 to find the previous number. We land on minus 7. So the expression for this sequence is 8n minus 7. Now part b. Ben says that the number 120 is in this sequence. Is he correct? Now, of course, we can go back to what we just did. We can actually write this as 8n minus 7 equals 120. And we can work out whether or not this gives us a full integer as a number or a decimal. However, it is quite amazing how often in an exam there is a shortcut to an answer to a question such as this. Take a look at the sequence itself. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 8 is 17, and so on. The fact is that because this sequence started with an odd number, the number 1, every time we add 8, which is an even number, we end up with another odd number. So the fact is, every single number in this sequence is going to be odd the number 120 is an even number, therefore it cannot possibly be in this sequence. It is always worthwhile in a question of this type having a look to see whether there is a logical, simple answer before you spend time working it out for yourself. So finally, let's summarise everything that we've done by using this sequence. The first question, find the expression. So we look for the gap. It is going up in fives. Therefore, the expression is going to start with 5n. We take it back a step to what the previous number would have been, 
by going back another 5 and we end up on the number 1. So it's 5n plus 1. Don't forget, if we go into the negatives, we put a minus there. That doesn't happen in this case. Now it says find the 32nd term. So in this case, we have to substitute the n for the number 32. So we have 5 times n becomes 32 plus 1. And using bid mass, 5 times 32 is 160 plus 1 equals 161. Therefore, the 32nd term in this sequence would be 161. Is the number 100 in the sequence? Well, again, we can write 5n plus 1 equals 100. Therefore, 5n equals 99. So n equals 99 divided by 5. Now, 99 divided by 5 gives us 19.8. It is not an integer, therefore it is not in the sequence. However, yet again, we could have saved ourselves from doing this piece of algebra by taking a look at the numbers in the sequence. Every single number ends in either a 1 or a 6, and that will never change. Therefore, 100 ends in a 0, it could not possibly have been in that sequence, and an explanation of that is a perfectly good answer. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you have, as always, my subscribe button is in the bottom corner here, and I have a link to another of my videos on the side. Hopefully, I will see you again. Thank you.